Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise Andrews and I make new videos every Tuesday talking about my postgrad stresses, successes, and creative endeavors. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you along with me in the process of sketching, coming up with ideas for stickers, and you know, digitizing them and making them into the final product that you see in my store on Redbubble. Yeah, I had this actually kind of requested in one of my last Redbubble videos, so I thought I would make it and get it out sooner than later. I hope this can help if you are just starting to learn how to do Redbubble or if you are still running your shop making stickers and need a little bit of inspiration. So this process includes coming up with ideas, sketching, inking in some way. I do both digital and by hand, coloring them in and then converting them into the sticker and designs on the Redbubble site. Check out my shop, which is Elise Draws on Redbubble. I would really appreciate if you checked it out, gave it a follow. Maybe I'll follow you back. Let me know if you followed me and we can kind of like each other's stuff. So the first part of this video is coming up with your idea list and inspiration. So I really recommend having a running list of ideas that you keep on your phone or your laptop that can be really easily accessible. I like to write down ideas of animals to draw, things that I think would be funny, kind of like maybe like a really long-legged cat or something. And if these pop into my head, then I usually jot them down. Or if you are someone who prefers to do work with kind of typography and just kind of funny phrases, keep a list of things that sound funny to you, things that you hear in your everyday life that kind of just pop into your head and write them down on this list. It'll really help you have a bank of ideas to not just actually create, but to move off from. Sometimes I like to do free drawing, which is just kind of, getting myself warmed up and getting some ideas just moving in my brain. And I will actually do this directly into apps like Photoshop or Illustrator um, because I normally start on with pen and paper, but I think that it's a good idea to sometimes just start in Photoshop and come up with some stuff and ideas. Um, I really like to sketch from Pinterest. Now bear in mind, it's really important that you're not just directly copying things from Pinterest, but I think um, Pinterest is a very good library of images that I would personally like to look at and kind of get ideas from compared to just looking on Google images. For example, like if you are drawing a bird, the specific type of bird, let's say it's a flamingo. Um, I use Pinterest as a way to kind of start sketching and getting my ideas out. Um, kind of learning what a flamingo looks like and getting that shape down. Then once I'm done with that, I'll usually just close out from Pinterest and come up with something on my own because um, a lot of the kind of fun to my work that I do is it has my own kind of style and interpretation of these animals and critters. And so I personally really like to um, just kind of use resources like Pinterest or Google Images as references, but I know that I have the skills as a cartoonist, illustrator, artist to make it my own. So then I'll start like with that, but then I will identify kind of like what is so fun about a flamingo? Like what's so funny about it? What um, are the really key parts of what a flamingo is? And then just play with that and come up with a bunch of different ideas from there. And the last little way that I get a lot of inspiration is to look for at my past designs, maybe my past designs that were very popular, my dinosaurs were very popular, um, and go from there and kind of see, okay, so that was a good category of work that was very popular. So I'm going to make some more dinosaurs or kind of come up with ideas there and kind of identify which kind of areas or types of stickers that you would like to make. And maybe you could even write this out on paper, but kind of choose some areas of your past successes or past things you enjoyed making and kind of make like a web from there and come up with ideas of other animals in my case, or other designs that you can make from there. See if your work falls into categories. I bet it does. So here is the process that I go through to make my Redbubble stickers. So the first step in my process is to come up with ideas. And so I will source that from my list of ideas that I keep on my phone, and as well as just kind of writing out ideas that just come to my mind or something that I've been thinking about that week. So the next step is to sketch and finalize my designs. So by that, I mean, I like to start working on paper and using my pencil and pens. I like to sketch things out and kind of come to a final design that I'm going to work with. I will say in my work, I don't do a lot of revisions personally, but just with my stickers, because I like the kind of doodly comical kind of 
essence to the stickers that I make and the designs because that's kind of where a lot of these sticker ideas actually started out and where some of my most popular sticker designs started out were on, literally just on my notes in class. After I do that, we move on to step three, which is moving it into the digital sphere. It's also really important that you take a good picture in the first place, make sure there's no shadows on it, make sure there's good lighting, and make sure the contrast is all up and it's just, it's just a black and white picture. I have kind of two methods, so I guess I'll show you both. The first method is doing it just with pen and paper on, and then moving it into Photoshop. So with this method, I, uh, go into Photoshop and kind of turn, I, I think I go to threshold and like posterize. You'll see it on the screen. I wish I could explain it well right now while I'm just sitting here, but I make sure that it looks like a black and white drawing with no extra graininess anywhere. And then I like to um, kind of cut out everything. So it's just um, the sticker itself or the design, but with the, sometimes I keep the white inside of it or sometimes I just keep the line art. Again, I don't have like a set process of doing things, but it's kind of generally this method or the other method that I'll tell you about. So from there, I will go in and actually go in with a brush and um, paint in the color. That's kind of one side of things. And then the other way that I will do things sometimes is use my sketch and not really ink it on paper and I will just move it straight into Illustrator. And through Illustrator, I will use the, I think the pencil tool or the brush tool. And I will kind of, you know, draw around the shape of the sticker, kind of get the lines in. And I will use the curve tool afterwards to adjust the curves of this image. And then from there, I know that there are other things you can do in Illustrator to make it easier. I think it's like live paint, but I will kind of just go in and um, either move that line art into Photoshop and just color it there, or I will color it in Illustrator kind of using, I think like the Pathfinder tool is what I'll generally do. I wish I had more detailed ways of explaining this to you, but I hope that just seeing the video will be helpful. Um, and let me know if you do have any questions about the specifics. The artboard function on Adobe Illustrator, which I had seen for a while, but I had never actually taken advantage of or used, um, just because I didn't really know how it worked. So basically what you would do here is you would set up your screen with the same dimensions. So say like a 10 by 10 canvas and save it. And a good way to make all of your Redbubble uploads easy and consistent to do across, you know, all of your designs. If you do this and then click check use artboards whenever you're exporting it, it will make it the same uniform size. So it's still a very high quality image, uh, but and it still has the transparency and everything, but it's a lot easier to apply to a lot of other designs and just have consistency across your products. So I just wanted to mention that. So then after that, you will just upload your work to Redbubble and follow all of the processes that are on there. I really like to make sure to take time to to see that all of my work looks good on each different product. Using the artboard method is really good to kind of copy it across all of your uploads. Yeah, I would also just recommend checking over everything before you hit publish to make sure it looks good because you never know if someone wants to buy your Pelican sticker on a pair of socks and someone just did that for me. It was my first sock sale, I was very excited, um, but you never know what product someone's gonna wanna buy. You know, Redbubble is often used just for stickers, but you should still put effort and energy into making your other products look good because you'll never know when someone will buy something. That's just my personal process. This whole video is just kind of the way that I have done things, but I hope it can kind of help you get some ideas you know, circling in your head and give you some inspiration to maybe try some new methods of coming up with ideas and stickers. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Um, again, please check out my Redbubble. Um, if you follow me on there and you let me know in the comments that you followed me, um, don't put your link because the link ends up getting to like spam comments, but um, let me know if you follow me on my Redbubble and I will make sure to follow you back and I will like some of your work if you like some of mine. So anyway, again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week for another creative post-grad stress success whatever video. Bye. <laughs>